hoping that Dale will work on his accent <laughs> so that he can, uh, you know, get it more adapted to what we understand here in Kentucky. <laughs> but uh, nevertheless, uh, Joanne asked me this summer to come and then asked me again this fall, and I really didn't understand why. I didn't think we had, as a school or myself, had done anything that spectacular. And I said, do you want me to? She said, we just want you to tell your story. And I, I said, are you sure? Yeah. So that's what I'm going to do. And it, so it may sound uh, rather dull and blasé. I don't know. I'm just going to tell you what we did. Uh, but we did have tremendous results. So certainly because of our teachers and students, uh, uh, it was a success. Uh, 18 months ago, uh, when we learned that we had received the Advanced Kentucky Grant, we were going to be one of the cohort three schools, uh, we were excited, uh, but yet worried, skeptical, apprehensive. I don't know what, uh, you can put several other adjectives uh, in there to describe our feelings. Myself as an administrator, when I saw the results of the first 28 schools and the first two cohorts and realized that they, to a school, 100% had shown great success, uh, the first thought that went through my mind was, what happens if we're the first one that does not? And so that, that weighed on my mind and that affected my thinking, it affected my doing, my activities, my thoughts, everything that I did with this program, uh, I did from that perspective. Uh, you know, we recruited diligently from our student body. Uh, we've had AP for a long time. We've stressed AP at Clay County High School for a long time, but it basically involved 5% of our kids or less. And so we had to change that perception and, uh, you know, get other kids, the quote, normal kids, or kids who had never been in an AP class, even though we knew they had the potential, uh, to sign up for these classes. So that was the first uh, obstacle. The folks from Advanced Kentucky came in, some of their representatives. They did a fantastic job of uh, not only explaining the program, but convincing our kids and that they could do it, urging them to enroll. <coughs> And they did, by, by large numbers. Uh, our enrollment increased from 68, uh, I think we had 68 tests taken in 2010. And this past year we had 330 something tests taken. So, uh, and including our AP World C and AP US History, which are not a part of the grant, but there was a ripple effect. We had more than 400 uh, AP tests taken at our school last year. So that was a dramatic increase, and in large part due to those uh, advanced Kentucky folks who came in and, and sold the program to our kids. Uh, you know, I was, as most of you all who are principals are, are used to being in control, used to controlling our own destiny or micromanaging things or, you know, I'll make sure this happens and that happens. But with this, you know, I was sort of at the mercy of our teachers and our kids. Whatever they did was going to be a direct, direct reflection on me and what I had or had not done. So uh, I got to thinking, what can I do as a principal? You know, I can't teach a class. I can't take the test. What can I do as a principal? And so I came up with several things. And let me say this, I, I, I don't have any handouts for you. I don't have a PowerPoint presentation for you. That Part of that is intentional. I didn't have anything like that. And I'm glad I did not. I'm glad somebody didn't say, here's exactly what you have to do. I didn't have that. I had to figure out some things on my own that I thought would work at our school. I'm going to tell you some things that worked at our school. I'm not going to tell you that they necessarily will work at your school. They may and they may not, but you know that best. So let me, let me stress that right from the beginning. Do what you think will work for your kids. You know them better than anyone, and I promise you that it will. Uh, so I settled on one key word, 
support. What can I do to support my teachers, support my students? You know, I'm in a role of supporter now, and I've got to figure out some way uh, to encourage and support them in this effort. It's new to everyone. And uh, so what I settled on uh, for the students, uh, and I've just jotted down a few things. There are probably more that I've forgotten, but uh, these kids that signed up for these classes, within about uh, three weeks of the start of the school year last year, a kid came to me and said, we need more time to work on our AP stuff. We don't have study halls at our school. So they, they said, can you create a study hall for us? So we did that. We'd never done that before, didn't know it could be done, but we came up with an idea and we just used our library uh, each period of the day and depending on what class it was and, and who the kids were, they could go to the library we set them up a study hall. Took their schedule and maybe dropped one of their elective classes that they didn't necessarily need that much and allowed them to go to the library to work uh, on AP materials. And we had several kids in the library throughout the day. So that was something we did for the kids. That wasn't a, a, an idea of mine. That came uh, from a student. And it worked well. It worked well. Uh, secondly, uh, we told the kids we would pay for all their exams. You know, Advanced Kentucky pays for half. We told them we, if, if we, don't, we do not want you worrying about having to pay for an exam. If that's going to be a barrier for you in taking these classes, we're going to remove that. And so we paid our school, out of our school money, we paid for every AP exam, the balance that Advanced Kentucky did not pay. Uh, so kids didn't have to worry about that. Their parents didn't have to worry about that. Uh, another thing we did, you know, I talked about changing the perception of what AP was about. Uh, at our school, and I'm sure at many of your schools, kids and parents get hung up on grades. And so these, quote, regular kids who had the ability to do AP but had never been in AP class, you know, their big fear was, I'm going in this class, I'm going to have a C, D, F. I'm not going to do that. I'm not ruining my GPA. Parents the same way. So I stressed to my teachers, at the beginning of the school year. You know, so what? First nine weeks, give everybody an A. Don't even give a grade. What does it matter? You're not going to get any credit until the end of the semester anyway, and even if it means taking it to the semester, tell everybody they got an A. Just so they will stay in the class and not drop out. Because we knew that we would, or we felt like we would have huge numbers that would uh, drop these classes once the workload started and once once school began. And we did have some. But I think due to several factors, we did not have the number to drop out that I thought that we would. So uh, that was just a little incentive. You know, don't worry about your grade. Worry about what's going on in this class and worry about passing that exam at the end of the year. That's what's important. Uh, I visited each and every AP classroom at the beginning of the school year uh, just to show them that I was interested, that I was supportive, that I was going to be there for them, uh, but basically told them that they could do it. They could do this. Uh, if, you've been in this if you've never been in this type of classroom before, it doesn't matter. You can do it. You can do this. Uh, I had kids come back and tell me that they probably would have dropped the class had I not all I did was make a visit. Uh, I don't know, I might have been there 10 minutes, but I spoke to each and every AP class. And, you know, I just thought it was important to do that. Uh, as for my teachers, uh, I gave all AP teachers an extra planning period. You know, just as the workload on the kid is more, so is the workload for the teacher. And many of these teachers were new to this process just as the students were. So I gave all AP teachers an extra planning period. Uh, and I think that made a big difference. It made a big difference. Uh, some of these teachers used this extra planning period to meet with their kids an extra time or two a week. 
Uh, and that, that really, I think, made a difference. There are vertical team meetings. When they had a vertical team meeting, I was there. I didn't do anything. I didn't say anything. I wasn't a part of the, of the structure of the meeting. I was just there. I think it's very important that you just let them know that you're there you're going to support them. No matter what it is, if it's a vertical team meeting, if it's giving them a planning period, what, whatever. Sometimes little things go a long way uh, with teachers and students. As for a couple of things that I did that probably was a support service for both teachers and students, for every Saturday study session that we went to, I went through all those. Uh, in our case, they were all at some other school. We had to travel. So we were leaving Clay County High School no later than 7.30, most of the time 7 o'clock in the morning. Uh, I went to every study session. Did I do anything at those? No. I just was a cheerleader. But I was there. They knew I was there. I thought it would make a difference. At the end of the study sessions, I always made sure I took them to the movies, took them out to eat, did something for them to let them know, hey, you gave up your Saturday. We appreciate that. Uh, I, I told the story this summer when we got ready for our first Saturday session. It was in January. I don't think we had had school uh, on Thursday or Friday. The session was scheduled on Saturday, and I don't know, but if you're from a rural, rural area, you, you don't have a, a, a whole lot of ways to communicate with the kids. If they're out of school for two days, it's tough to get messages out and get them back, you know, whatever. And so I was, you know, I thought, here we go. First Saturday session, we want a good turnout. Uh, we missed the two days prior. Uh, that Saturday morning, 7 o'clock, I think we had uh, 68 kids. Oh, by the way, it was snow. There was still snow on the parking lot. But somehow those kids found a way, 68 of them found a way to get to the bus and go to that Saturday session. I knew when that happened that we were going to have some success. Also, we always did this, but I did it a little more so last year. Every time, every year when we build our school schedule, the first thing we put in our schedule is AP. In the past, we did it so it wasn't, we, we don't have so many AP classes and we didn't want them to conflict with student schedule. We wanted the students to be able to take a maximum of classes if they wanted to. Uh, last year, we had uh, a little bit more difficulty because we had to work around our science. We were on a six period day. So classes were one hour long. We had to find a way to get these science kids in there for an hour and a half. So during our 30 minute homeroom, 20 to 30 minute homeroom period every day, we just made those kids, we, we moved our chemistry and biology to first period and fifth period, which is first hour of the day and lunch. And so the chemistry and biology teachers, they had their class, they had those same kids in homeroom. So that got them an 30, extra 30 minutes a day. Uh, our lunch periods, we have three lunch periods. They're 30 minutes each. Well, normally the kids are in class for an hour and they have 30 minutes for lunch. If it meant it, we brought their lunch to them in the classroom, kept them in the, in the room so they could have that extra 30 minutes for their lab or whatever. So, you know, these are things that were specific to our school, uh, specific to, to my thinking. Like I say, they may not work for you all. Uh, I don't know. I, I didn't think they were that great at the time. Uh, but they did work for us. I mentioned in the beginning that we, uh, I think in 2010, we had 68 tests taken. We had 11 qualifying scores in 2010. Okay. This past year, we had 95 qualifying scores. We went from 11 to 95. Now this summer when I spoke to you, I knew we had had some dramatic increases and so forth. 
Little did I realize at that time that Clay County High School was number one in the nation from cohort three schools, number one in the nation in percentage of increase of qualifying scores. In addition to the 95 qualifying scores, our teachers will tell you to a person uh, that we would have had a whole lot more. We had 63 twos. We missed 28 days of school. Our teachers will tell you and would bet you that had, had we missed five days of school or less, that probably 40 or more of those 63 twos would have been qualifying scores, which would have given us like 130 qualifying scores from 11. I know that's all hypothetical. I guess if, if we'd had 130, they'd have launched an investigation. <laughs> but, uh, you know, that, that's another obstacle. We worried about that. We were going along so well, then we missed 28 days of school. We thought, oh no, here we go. All the progress we made is going down the tubes. But uh, that didn't happen. Our teachers and our kids overcame that. But I really believe that had we not missed those days of school, we would, have, we would have enjoyed even more success than we did. Uh, I didn't mean to speak this long. I wanted the session to be more of a question and answer because I was sitting where you were last year, and I remember thinking, I don't want to hear all this speaking. I want to be able to ask some questions because I was totally in the dark. You're not so much in the dark now. You're three or four months into your school year, so you figured a lot of things out. But uh, if anyone has any questions, uh, I even have some, I have two of my teachers in the room. I have my AT coordinator for this year. I have my successor from Clay County High School. So we've got a, we've got a great representation here this morning. So if you have a question that, and I can't answer it, I'm sure one of, one of those folks can answer it. Uh, so I'll open it up to questions. I thank you for your time. I thank you for your attention. And I can tell you that if this program works at Clay County High School, it works at Clay. Absolutely. Follow the model. The things I was doing, I didn't realize it till it was over. I'll be honest, I didn't look at the model. I did, I just winged it. I did what I thought would work. But looking back, everything that I did fits the model. Everything that I did goes in that model somewhere. So I subconsciously or without knowing, I was using the model. But I tell you, if you'll use it, it will work. We're living proof of that. <laughs>